Welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz, and today I thought it would be fun to join in and make a pair of Bernie Smitten's crochet style. The original pair that Bernie is wearing were created with repurposed wool sweaters by Jen Ellis, and I'll be sure to add an article in the description box below because these are so cute and fun. So in keeping with the spirit of this, I decided to do the same thing but in crochet. We're going to do this in three parts. We're going to make the front, the palm, and then the thumb. Now these are very beginner friendly because of this. We're just going to be stitching parts together, but we're also going to be doing a technique called tapestry crochet, which can be challenging. But no worries, we'll take it very slow and I've simplified it as much as possible. As always, there are time stamps below so you can jump to your point of interest. So yeah, let's just dive right in and get started. For this project, I'm using a five millimeter hook with worsted weight yarn. I'm going to put links in the description box below with all the specifics of the yarns that I used. Just for quick gauge, I wanted to show you the measurements of the mittens. Uh, this worked out to be about nine inches long by four inches wide. So if you want to go bigger or smaller, you can either work with a bigger or smaller hook size, that will help, or you can take the graph that I provide for this and you can add some stitches along the sides on the graph. As well as with the cuff, I would add a couple more rows. Since we are working in panels, you can play with this and it shouldn't be too hard to adapt. Let's go ahead and get started with the cuff first. For both the palm side and the front side, we're going to start with the cuff and then build on top of it. We're going to start with creating the length of the cuff right now. So I'm chaining 11. The 11th chain counts as our turning chain because we want the length to be 10. So we're going to be doing 10 single crochets back down our chain. Skip that first chain, single crochet all the way back down. And then when you're ready, chain one and turn. Now I realize this is pretty dark on camera, but this is such an easy stitch that I think you'll be able to understand this pretty clearly, even if you can't see it very well. Now, if you take a look at Bernie's mittens, the originals, they're just a solid color of dark brown. So at this point, you can just single crochet back and forth until you reach your desired width, or you can do the ribbing. I decided to do a ribbing because it's super easy and I just like the effect. So at this point, regardless, skip that first chain, working into the back loop only, create a single crochet and do that all the way down. Make sure you get into that last one. It's always a bit tricky for some reason. The best advice I can give for this is to always count after each row, making sure you have 10. Chain one and turn. Skip that first chain, working into the back loop only, work your way down. We're going to be working 10 rows, making five ribs. If you want your cuff to be longer, I would recommend going up in multiples of two uh, to get that ribbing effect. So instead of five ribs, you'd want six ribs, which would give you 12 rows. You can safely do this with this pattern. The rest of the pattern will work perfectly fine if you do go up to 12 rows. Once you have your cuff finished, don't fasten off. We're going to keep working and building on it. What we want to do now is we want to put some single crochets here because we want to be able to attach the palm pieces. Do the best you can with this. What I like to do is kind of go into the meat of the stitches. I don't have anything very specific here. I don't like going into the very visible gaps because it makes it very holy. So I did 10 rows. I want 10 single crochets. Okay, it's time to bring in our second color and you have two choices here. You can either fasten off from your cuff and join your next strand of yarn, or you can continue on where you left off. 
I'm going to continue on where I left off and I'm just going to join here. So I'm going to pull these back out so that I have two loops left on my hook. We're going to be doing this technique a lot when we're changing color in this pattern, so I would recommend that you give it a try and get used to it. Okay, bring in your next color. We're working on the palm. Use the new color to pull through and finish that stitch. If you want, you can take the two tails and tie them just for added assurance. Don't knot it uh, because you may want to make some changes, but it sometimes does help just to keep things intact a little bit. You can always pull that out later if you want. Chain one and turn. Now for this pattern, we're going to be doing one increase. We want to go from 10 single crochets up to 13. That's so we can get a nice uh, even pattern going on on the tapestry side. Single crochet all the way across, no increasing yet. Okay, make sure that you have the same amount of stitches as your cuff. I need 10. Perfect. Go ahead and chain one and turn. Now we're going to do the increase. We want to go from 10 to 13. I like to make it a bit even, so I'm going to do one right about here, here, and over here. Okay, I'll increase in this stitch. That just means I'm adding two into that same stitch. I'll go ahead now and do another increase. And another. And finish off with one more single crochet. Okay, go ahead and count to make sure that you have 13 now. Chain one, turn. And now we're just going to keep single crocheting for 11 rows before we transition to the blue. I'm going to add this graph here now so you can pause on it. I'm going to continue on until I reach row 21. That's right before we're going to decrease and then I'll meet you back here to show you how to do that. Okay, once you've reached your 21st row, you've finished a complete row, it's time for us to start decreasing. Very easy to do. Make sure that you have 13 stitches, chain one, and turn. So to decrease, we're just going to insert our hook, yarn over, do not finish your single crochet, go back inserting, yarn over, into that second stitch, and then you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three, and you have your first decrease. So you've taken your first two stitches and combined them to make one stitch, and you're going to go all the way across, and then when you come to the last two stitches, you're going to repeat that process. So single crochet all the way across, and I have two stitches left, so I'm going to decrease, making these two into one. Insert, yarn over, pull through. Do not finish your single crochet, just hold on. Insert again, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three, and you just took those two stitches and made them into one. So we're going from 13 down to 11. Make sure you have 11. If you do, chain one and turn. And we're going to repeat that process again. And you're going to keep doing this until you get to your last row will have five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. We are good to go. And our palm side is finished. Let's go ahead and fasten off and I'll see you for the next portion.
We're getting ready to work on the front portion or the tapestry side of the mitten. And before we get started, be sure that you have your cuff ready. Do not fasten off. We're going to attach the next color to this. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. If you're not familiar with tapestry crochet, I'll add some links in the description box below so that you can see some articles on the basic instructions of how it's done. I would consider this an intermediate technique, but I've simplified it as much as possible to make it fun and easy, even if you're a beginner. So we're getting ready to attach our first color to our cuff. I've already finished the cuff, but I'm just going to go backwards a little bit, get back to where we only have two loops left on our hook so that I can bring in the new color yarn. We're working on row one of the tapestry crochet. We're going to be doing this a lot, joining new colors this way. So hopefully you got used to doing that when you were working on the palm. Now throughout, things are going to be a little loosey goosey. Don't stress out about that too much. You can go back in and tighten later as you're working. If you want, you can go ahead and tie these two ends just to hold it in place. Chain one. We're working row one right now, and it's just single crochets all the way along. Turn. Now remember that we do need to make an increase. We're going to be going from 10 to 13, but we'll do that in row two, the next row, just like we did with the palm. Chain one, turn. And now again, just like before, we're going to be adding three increases here to go from 10 to 13. If you worked a 12 cuff, if you have 12 single crochets that you're starting with here, then you only need to do one increase. I do need to do three increases, so I'm just going to spread them out. One here in the beginning, middle, and end. Here we go. Here's my first increase. And I'll see you at the other side. I'll do another increase right here. Really doesn't matter where you place them. You just want 13 single crochets when you're finished. Okay, so we've done our first two rows and we're getting ready to work row three. And as you can see, we're going to be bringing in a color. So what I like to do when I'm working with a chart is I get very literal with myself. I cross things out and I use an arrow to help me remember which direction I'm going because at times we're going to be working a little bit backwards. Okay, so I know I've done row one and row two. We're getting ready to work row three. And I know that I'm getting ready to work from right to left. So I'm going to put a little reminder here for myself that I'm working from right to left. Now, even though I'm not starting my white until a couple of stitches in, I'm going to bring that color in right now. For me, it's easiest just to always bring in that new color, regardless of where I'm going to start with it, just to keep all of my ends on the side. It's a bit fiddly, I do admit, but it does work well. So I'm going to be bringing in the white, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it in now, but I'm working my first two stitches in brown, so I'm going to go ahead and begin that. Chain one and turn. Treat your yarn like a toddler. Keep your eyes on it at all times. So I'm bringing it in and I'm bringing it to the front. Okay, so I can see it. I'm going to go ahead and yarn over, making sure that that white piece is getting caught. And I'm going to do my first single crochet. Don't worry about it being loose or tight at this point. We just want it to be held. The other important thing to know with tapestry crochet is that when you're working the stitches, you're going to be joining the color that you're going to use right before you use it. So I know I've done my first stitch. I've got my white ready. I have it in front so I can see it. I'm getting ready to do stitch number two on the graph. I have two loops on my hook. Now I know that coming up is the white. So what I want to do is I want to bring it in. So I'm going to do a switcheroo, okay? We're going to bring the brown to the front, and now we're getting ready to use the white. We've already started stitch number two, and we're going to loop over and pull that white through. 
That's because we're getting prepared for, for the next stitch, which will be white. And you see, I kept the brown in front so that I could keep an eye on it. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to accidentally forget it in the back, okay? Because you're going to be so mad if you've done all this work and then you look and you see that you haven't carried it and you're going to have to start over. This gets tricky, but just let's just do it. So I've done the white, but I know that the next three will be brown. So we're going to switch switcheroo. We're going to bring the white so we can see it. Toddlers in front, always keep an eye on it. Now we yarn over, pull through those loops. We're done with the white. Next three are going to be the tan. Making sure the white is in view. One, two, and three. Now I know after the third, I'm going to do white again. So I'm going to switch. Bringing the brown to the front. We're working with the white. You're an over pull through. Now I'm going to do that white stitch going to be doing three browns next, so I flip, yarn over, pull it through, and now I'm going to be doing brown. One, two, and three. Here we go. We're on our third one. We know we're getting ready to do white again. So we're switching. Bring the brown in front so we can keep an eye on it. Working the white, finish that loop. Working the white. We're only doing one, so we switch back. Now, even if there's points where I know I'm going to be changing color right there, I don't worry about it because I just want to regroup and see where I am. I can pull this back apart if I need to. Right now, I just want to make sure I've done everything right before we move on. Okay, everything's good. Now we're going to be working from left to right. So I make an arrow for myself. So we're just doing it again. The same procedure we just did, we're doing again. Chain up one, turn. Okay, we've got our white there. We don't want to forget about it, so bring it up to the front like we've been doing. One, we're doing two browns, two, but we know white's coming, so we're flipped. Okay, so I hope you got the idea of that. I think you should be good to go as far as the technique. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work off camera and meet you back here at 19 because this one's a bit tricky because you're flipping your yarn back and forth, back and forth. I'll see you up here at 19. So two things are happening here. I'm bringing in the brown and it actually is the first color in the next row, right? So I need to transition to that color brown next for that first single crochet. So I'm going to undo this, backtrack just a little bit, bring in the brown. This works out great because we're using it one to get ready for that next square for that row 19, but also this brings in our new color in a nice secure way. So chain one, turn your work. Now we have our brown. Don't forget about that light brown. Bring it up and make sure it's in the front so you can keep an eye on it. And now we're going to do our first single crochet, which is a brown. But now we're going to flip flop between dark brown, light brown, dark brown. So we do our first one, the dark brown, switch, light brown. One light brown, and 
one dark brown. Switch, pull in the light brown, one light brown, switch, bring in the dark brown, switch, light brown, Bring in the dark brown. Light brown. Switch. One. And we're getting ready to do our decreasing and we're going to be transitioning to white. This is a little tricky here because we're going from brown to white and we're decreasing all at once. So let's do this together. I'm finished with my brown, so I can go ahead and snip that off. Okay, so I'm going to unloosen this, get it back to two loops on my hook, and I'm going to fasten on the white. Good. Chain one and turn. And tie those together. So we're good there. Okay, so, so we've brought in our white. We've just chained one. We haven't made any stitches yet. What we need to do now is we're going to take our row of 13 and reduce it down to 11. So I'm going to do a decrease at the beginning and a decrease at the end. This will also give our rounded edge for our mitt. Okay, so we're going to be decreasing these two stitches. So I'm going to bring them together. I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch. I'm not going to complete my single crochet. I'm going to go into the second stitch, repeat. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and I've just decreased. Go across. I'm coming up to my last two stitches. I'm going to begin the first one, but not finish it. Go into the last one there, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and we've done another decrease. So you should have 11 stitches now. Chain up one, turn, and now you're just going to continue on with the pattern, decreasing on each row until you have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five stitches. We are good to go. We are finished with our mitten. Now it's time to go ahead and weave in these ends to get ready to seam this together. So what I would suggest doing is just taking your ends and then just weaving into the sides. No one's going to see it. It doesn't have to be very pretty. Just get it weaved in. Once you have your tapestry all finished, the next thing you need to do is decide which side you like best. We're going to be flipping this inside out, so we want to sandwich the right sides together at this point. This is not the side I like, I've got it on the inside because we're going to be stitching around the edge now and then flipping it back to right the right side when we're finished. Okay, so you've got your right side inside. Now you need to decide if you're working on the right mitten or the left mitten. You're going to be working in the opposite direction because we're flipping it, right? To help me remember my directions, I got an old glove and I put stitches for the front of the mitt as well as where the thumb opening would be to help me remember. So I need to work on a left-handed mitten because I've already done the right hand. So I'm going to be stitching along the edge leaving an opening for the thumb, and then it should be a left hand when I'm all finished. There are several different ways that you can stitch this together. Uh, you could do a whip stitch if you wanted. You could even, even single crochet along if you want, but I found the best for me was doing a simple running stitch about a quarter of an inch on the inside. Doing the running stitch, your yarn is more concealed. When I was doing the whip stitch, it was showing too much and I didn't like it. While we're doing this, you also need to decide where you want your thumb placement. I found that pretty close to the cuff line 
and working my way up worked pretty well. But again, we'll just test it as we're seaming and you'll figure out what's right for you. Go ahead and choose the color that you want to use for your seaming and take it and measure out at least four lengths, three, four, to the measurement of your mitt. Remember that you don't want to go too close to the edge because it could easily fall out, but you don't want to go too far in either because it's going to affect the fit. About a quarter of an inch works pretty well. And now I'm just going to do a running stitch. I'm not very fancy with this. Just going on the inside, back and forth. Pull on it every now and again to make sure it's nice and tight. You've got this to help you line things up. As you can see the running stitch, just like if you were on a sewing machine. When you're doing the corners, same thing. Just keep running your seam just about a quarter of an inch in. I've been continuing the seam and I'm getting close to the thumb area. So I want to try this on and see how we're looking. A typical opening for a thumb is about an inch and a half roughly. So about six to seven stitches on one side. Let's say it was six or seven chains. You could either just run a stitch along the side and then continue down. My preference is just to go ahead and clip it off and then start again because I don't want anything to interfere with my single crochets when I start building the thumb here. And then I'll weave that in in a little bit, but then I'm going to continue on down here with the rest of my yarn. Okay, everything is working out the way I'm wanting it to. I adjusted this a little bit to go up a teeny bit higher. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and weave this end in and we're ready to start working on the thumb. Okay, I'm getting ready to work on the thumb portion here. Now you can do this two ways. You can either attach and build your thumb on your piece or you can do it separately. Uh, doing it separately, you would just chain to the circumference that you want your thumb to be and then just attach it with a long tail. I'm just going to do this directly on the piece itself. What I want to do is I want to get roughly from six to eight uh, single crochets on here, depending on how big you want your thumb size. This isn't an exact science. If you're up or down one or two chains, it really doesn't matter. My goal here is to do six single crochets on each side and one single crochet in the middles, giving me roughly 14. Fasten on however you like best, chain one, and now since I'm in the middle, I'm going to do three single crochets on one side and then three single crochets on the other. This first chain one will count as my first single crochet. So I'm going to do two more on this side. And now I'm going to do one here in the center to bring these two sides together. It's a bit tight in there, but there we go. Okay, six on this side, just go wherever you can, just do the best you can. Seven, and one right there. We should have our 14, good. So instead of slip stitching and then chaining one, I'm just going to do continuous rounds of single crochets, except one little thing here that I wanted to mention. You don't have to do this, it's just optional. But here at the crook of the thumb, I'm going to do three slip stitches instead. So in these three chains, I'm going to do slip stitches to help kind of pull pull the thumb upwards. It won't do it that effectively, but it will help a little bit. And I'll just do that for a couple of rounds just to kind of angle it upwards. But again, that is completely optional. You don't have to do that. At this point, you could put a stitch marker to keep a tally of where you are on your rounds. But I know that I've begun here on the palm side, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to continue working. 
And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and just in these couple of spaces here, I'm just going to add slip stitches just ever so slightly to help be a little shorter in that space. And then back to regular single crochets. So I'm just going to keep doing this around and around until I reach the tip of my thumb. For the slip stitch area that I'm doing at the thumb here, I'm only going to do that for a couple of rounds. I think I'm going to stop doing that after round three and then at round four, just continue on with single crochets all the way around. So I will meet you back here once we reach the tip of the thumb. I think we're there. I'm going to start reducing now. So what we're going to do, we're going to just go all the way around decreasing like we were doing earlier for our, for our main pattern. So we're just going to work two stitches, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through all three. That's our decrease. We're going to do that all the way around till we come back to the beginning. One, two, pull through all three. And then when you're finished doing that, we're just going to now fasten off. We're going to give ourselves a long tail. Just weaving back and forth around until you reach the start again. Pull it closed. We'll make a couple of passes to tighten that, making sure that it won't open back up. And then just weave in your end. Okay, and at this point, we're going to gently put it right side out. Mm -hmm. 